Hi everyone, greetings from National Skills Network. Uh, today we are looking at a very important topic in skill development, vocational education and training and upskilling in the healthcare sector. So we all know that nurses have played a very important role and have been playing a very, very important role post COVID and during COVID and their profession assumes even more greater significance today when we are looking at different types of pandemics coming in and the kind of transformation healthcare sector is going through. And most of us have availed the services of a nurse sometime or the other in our lives. Uh, so if you go back and think, what was it that made that service very memorable? I'm sure you will have many memories of interpersonal relationship that the nurse was able to build with the patient as well as the family members. So in case we are talking about excellence in nursing, it's very important to look at skills, education, formal training, upskilling, and uh, various ways to help the nurses to excel in their professional journey, which is filled with many challenges. So to look at these issues today, we have with us two eminent persons, one from the healthcare industry and other from the vocational segment. We have with us Dr. Srinivasa Rao Pulijala, who is the CEO Apollo Med Skills, and we have with us Mr. Ranjan Chaudhary, who is the head partnerships vocational education at TCS Ion. So welcome to this talk, sir. And uh, so with this. I would also like to inform you that both these organizations, leaders in their own ways, have come together to collaborate and create that difference in the nursing education and training in India. So congratulations on the collaboration and we from NSN are very happy to feature this conversation with you to learn more about how this collaboration is going to change or transform the kind of skilling that's happening for nurses in India. So I would like to begin with a common question to both of you today. And when we talk about nursing, as I said, it's inevitable for us to relate to the recent COVID experience. So. Uh, Post-COVID and the pandemic becoming an endemic and other issues coming up, you know, uh, other challenges which are coming up in the healthcare industry. How do you foresee the uh, nursing profession taking shape, the need for training, the need for skilling and the new challenges that are coming up and how do we scale it so that, you know, we are able to reach to many, many healthcare centers uh, in the country. So maybe Dr. Srinivas, you can uh, start by answering this question. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Madhuri, for inviting uh, us for this uh, interactive session. So uh, yes, I, I think COVID, uh, post-COVID, the impact of uh, COVID on skill training, particularly on the nursing, has been tremendous. And uh, basically, COVID has highlighted uh, two gaps. One is, of course, gaps in the infrastructure and gaps in the skills of healthcare resources. So within the, uh, particularly when it comes to nursing, I think gaps in skills of nurses and also gaps in continuous medical and nursing education were significantly highlighted because there was an absolute and urgent need to upskill nurses on certain clinical areas, administrative areas and behavioral competencies. So when I say clinical areas, we all know um, the ventilator management was a challenge. So there was a need to train every clinician uh, for that matter on ventilators and also um, get them hands-on on using of ventilators, rational use of oxygen. There was a shortage of oxygen. So rational use was very important. So how to rationally use the uh, oxygen, then critical care competencies. Then on the behavioral side, uh, clinical counseling and reassurance of patient because there was a huge panic around. So mm -hmm. how to handle such situations, particularly on the disaster management, healthcare disasters. So this is, these are some of our uh, critical areas that we have focused on um, in the training. And uh, when it comes to the, the global nursing scenario, okay, nurses are backbone of any healthcare system. And uh, they were in the front line in the battle against the pandemic. And today we have just uh, under 28 million nurses worldwide. So the total number of nurses worldwide are 28 million. 
and uh, nursing numbers increased by 4.7 million worldwide between 2013 to 18. So during those five years, um, um, there is an addition of 4.7 million nurses, but this still leaves a global shortfall. Though there is an addition of nurses, as we speak today, there's a shortage of 5.9 million nurses worldwide. And the greatest gaps are found in countries like Africa, Southeast Asia, including India, and the WHO Eastern Mediterranean region, mm -hmm. and some parts of Latin America. So globally, everywhere, there's a shortage of nurses. So as you rightly mentioned, there's a need to scale the nursing education, particularly in India, because India has traditionally been one of the largest supplier of nurses to the world. And we should continue to be that, and uh, we need to scale up our infrastructure. There are a lot of uh, kind of initiatives taken both by the, by the public and private sectors uh, for scaling up the nurse skilling uh, infrastructure in India now. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so, Mr. Ranjan, uh, maybe you can add, uh, you know, to what Dr. Srinivas said from the scaling and technology angle, uh, you know, so uh, we would be really happy to know more about how does this work when we think of reaching out to so many millions of them. Uh, uh, like uh, Dr. Rao said, uh, Madhuri, first of all, I'd like to thank you for inviting us to your show and giving us the opportunity to reach out to uh, an audience uh, who would possibly gain from the insights. Uh, so, um, uh, you see, before I get into uh, what TCS uh, is, the whole ethos and the whole thought process behind it, COVID, as we all know, has been a watershed where the entire paradigm of learning, acquiring skills and competencies has gone through a radical change. What was earlier on seen as only a brick and mortar way of providing education, learning skills and competencies has, uh, on account of the pandemic, undergone a sea change both in terms of the uh, using technology to provide education and to uh, upskill people, as also in, uh, in terms of the larger, if I may say so, both the learners as well as the larger fraternity accepting mm -hmm. online as a valid means of acquiring education and skills. So like you said, healthcare, or rather the importance of healthcare was underscored with the pandemic. And going forward, I think this is one sector which rightfully so would require more attention and more, uh, if I may say so, uh, um, investment mm -hmm. in providing quality education and uh, skilling uh, opportunities, which would be available across the country. Like you said, India is a huge nation. The numbers, like Dr. Rao said, are very large. In, in order to reach out to everyone while ensuring that there is no dilution in terms of the quality of the content, or the trainers who are going to provide them the learning and the competencies, I think the hybrid model or the blended model, the digital model, call it whatever you may, would be imperative and the way forward, not only in healthcare, but across sectors. Yeah. Yeah, so um, we are really happy to know that we are looking at solutions, you know, which are enabled by digital technology to reach out to people. Uh, with this, Dr. Srinivas, now uh, you have seen so much of nursing training happening through Apollo Med Skills, mostly in the face-to-face, -face, uh, you know, in-person kind of a format. Uh, now, with these inputs from uh, Dr. Mr. Ranjan, uh, how do you think, you know, we are going to address few very critical challenges in nurse? Uh, in the training of uh, nurses. So could you please highlight maybe a few of those uh, challenges which will be addressed through this model? Absolutely. I think um, Ranjan has mentioned a very important point of blended learning as well as uh, kind of a digital model. 
So if you see traditionally Apollo Med Skills as an organization within the Apollo Hospitals Group was a it's a brick and mortar training organization. We have training centers uh, in 24 states in India, and uh, our our deliver was predominantly classroom based. Okay, but during COVID, we have realized the importance of this blended learning, and so because there was a need for scale and with the speed, because there was no luxury of time for training. And during COVID, we have trained close to 250,000 healthcare professionals on COVID management and how it was possible because of technology and of course, blending. Because if you see healthcare learning as knowledge, skills and competencies, right? So knowledge is something that can be delivered virtually. So we have divided our learning components um, into these three components and the knowledge components were delivered online wherever there was a hands-on skills training and competence required, uh, we used our infrastructure of simulation labs and also the uh, the hospitals, the network hospitals for training. So uh, yes, the blended learn learning models are the way to go models in future. And uh, that will be a solution for us to address the scale required in a short span of time. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely going to, I think, change the scenario of uh, reaching out to many professionals. Uh, my next question would be like from TCS Ion, uh, Mr. Ranjan, how is it that, you know, you're going to look at uh, executing this model in that digital format? And uh, uh, what would be, let's say, some of the advantages for uh, nursing professionals? Let's say, for instance, they want to upskill themselves or they want to, you know, uh, get some additional uh, knowledge and com you know acquire more competencies through these courses right so uh Madhuri, uh in our partnership with apollo specifically apollo mm -hmm. uh, is an iconic name in the healthcare uh, industry in india for many decades and with a very wide footprint across the country uh, so TCS in this partnership, our role would be to leverage the excellence that exists in Apollo, whether it is in terms of content, faculty, pedagogy, and enhance the reach of these learning programs across the country, leveraging our platform. So, uh, Apollo brings the competency, the excellence where it comes to the sector, sector, the sectoral excellence, whereas TCS brings in the expertise that it has in terms of technology and the platform. And also uh, jointly, we would make this accessible through uh, when we talk about nursing programs, through nursing colleges and other institutions, make it available to nurses across the country. Nursing education is available everywhere. But the difference that both Apollo and we would like to do is to provide them the knowledge, skills, and competence, which will help them move from being a good nurse to a great nurse. And I'm sure that Dr. Rao will elaborate in terms of what is it that the fine program will offer to the nurses, which will allow them to get that Delta and move ahead in their career. And above all, provide patient care, which is meaningful. Yeah. Yeah, so the most important word I think here is about excellence. And like you said, moving from good to great. So over to you, Dr. Srinivas. Please tell us more about this program that we are talking about, uh, the fine uh, program for upskilling the nurses. It would be nice to know how it's going to transform uh, nursing training. Sure, sure, Madhavi. And um, if you see, uh, fine stands for, it's, it's an acronym that stands for finishing skills for nursing excellence. So, so the excellence is a part of vision of this program. So um, the uh, FINE program is a very comprehensive nurse training course, specially designed for the new incumbent nurses. So the nurses who are graduating out of nursing schools 
to make them to prepare them to face the live hospital environments for, for the healthcare delivery. So if you see nurses play a very, very critical role in the uh, clinical delivery and clinical outcomes in a hospital. So it's very important to train them. And uh, one of, we have identified that there are about gaps in four areas of learning uh, as part of their graduate nursing learning. So the first area is on the clinical competencies. We have identified some specific areas where the clinical competencies have to be sharpened or refreshed so that when the nurse reaches the work environment, she is readily deployable. This is the first area. The second area that we have identified is in the area of healthcare quality. If you see, there's a lot of evolution in healthcare quality that is happening over the years now. And most of the hospitals today are quality accredited. Either we, we hear names like NABH, JCI, which is National Accreditation Board of Hospitals, Joint Commission International, National Accreditation Board for Labs, QCI, Quality Council of India accreditations and so on. So the nurses should be made aware of these quality accreditations and also the process excellence, like Six Sigma, ISO, how it is applicable to hospitals. So this is the quality element where we have seen quality area where we have seen some gaps in the nursing education. The third area is uh, grooming and administrative skills. So as I mentioned to you, certain behavioral aspects, how to handle patient's attendance, how to reassure a patient, to how to uh, give him a confidence of healing. So these are some of the traits that a nurse should inherently possess because nurse will spend most of the time with the patients in the hospital. And fourth is, of course, the emerging digital technologies uh, impacting healthcare. So the digital skills in healthcare are also important. So we have carefully structured this program. We have uh, curated this curriculum basing across these four areas, clinical competencies, quality competencies, the behavioral and uh, grooming competencies, and the digital skills. So this, this is how the program is shaped up. And uh, again, as I mentioned, the knowledge aspects are digitally delivered on the TCS ION uh, learning management system, uh, very quite intuitive system. The skills are delivered through our simulation labs, uh, through network of our state of the art sim labs across India. And the competencies are uh, again delivered through on job trainings, very well structured through a skill logbook that is given to the student or the trainee at the time of training. So, this is how um, uh, this program, whole program is structured, and we are looking to impact large number of nurses across India. This will help both the graduating nurses because they will be readily deployable and employable in hospitals. It will help hospitals because it will significantly reduce the onboarding time for human resources departments in the hospitals. And um, I, I'm sure that the nurse, nursing directors and the CEOs of the hospitals would love hiring from us a readily deployable nurse. Yeah, sure. I think uh, that is definitely going to happen because it seems to be a very well-knit program, the way you have uh, described all the components. And uh, now the challenge would be, since we are talking about also scaling and reaching out to many people, and then it's inevitable to talk about numbers and numbers uh, also connect with the rural areas, the, you know, the hospitals or the academic institutions in nursing, you know, the colleges, rural, semi-urban. So, uh, Mr. Ranjan, then with uh, TCS ION, uh, you know, uh, delivery uh, system, the technology which is working behind it, how do you think this will, uh, you know, complement all that is coming up from the content side, from the uh, expertise which is provided by Apollo Med Skills and the description which Dr. Srinivas gave us just now about how it actually get implement, implemented. So could you please throw some light on uh, specifically, let's say if academic institutions or training organizations in semi-urban or rural areas want to use this program, uh, how does it uh, work for them? Uh, I think that's an excellent question, uh, Madhuri. Like you said, uh, the impact that we want to create is across the country. And like you said, most of India uh, is in the peri-urban and rural areas. So um, while, um, number one, to reinforce what Dr. Rao said, this is not just a program which is there to transfer knowledge, 
skills and competencies in a uh, real world environment is very much part of the course, uh, which is taken care of through the network hospitals uh, or hospital network, which Apollo has. Along with Apollo, we are taking this to nursing schools across the country. We have already done one uh, seminar in uh, Telangana, and we will shortly be uh, uh, having more seminars in different states in India, uh, in, in, in South India, as well as in the North. And our objective is to reach out to nursing colleges and institutions, not only in the cities, but also, like you said, in the peri-urban areas. And for this, uh, we also have a team which is actively on the ground across many states, connected to different institutions, who will be reaching out and spreading uh, the awareness and the benefits of the FIND program and the ease of access uh, for their uh, students. Mm -hmm. So I hope that answers uh, your question. Yeah. I would also like to look at it from the student's point of view, the nurses who would want to enroll in this program. So Dr. Srinivas, they might have questions like, you know, uh, will they get enough uh, clinical exposure and experience through this? Uh, how would it be done? Like uh, you already mentioned how it's going to be done through simulation or through in-person contact sessions and others. And what would be the kind of resources that are accessible to them, assessments, certification, and so on. So can you please tell us a bit more on these aspects of the fine program absolutely so uh, as i mentioned the students have uh, uh, learning experience there's a journey that they go through okay in this journey the first is uh, a theoretical sessions classes that they undergo on the key knowledge aspects that we have identified knowledge gaps so they get access to some of the best nursing teachers in india these are both academic nurses as well as clinical nurses it is very important to have a combination of both because the academic nurses, they give the, the knowledge aspect of this and the clinical nurses will give the on-ground realities of a hospital environment and how the knowledge that is taught in the classrooms is translated in a, a real-life environment in a hospital. This is the first thing. So they get access to best nursing teachers thanks to technology because this is delivered online on the DCSI on LMS. The, the, student, the teachers from anywhere, so anywhere, anytime learning. So it's a remote learning that happens. Then they get access to a network of sim labs. So it's very important that before a nurse gets onto a real environment, she gets some simulation, simulated experience. On the simulation labs, they get kind of access to three or four kinds of simulations. Mm -hmm. The first simulation is a tactile simulation. That means they get a touch-based experience on certain skills for example skills of uh, putting a rice tube in the nose okay so it's a very painful procedure if you really have to do it on a real patient so we give them access to a a mannequin mannequin is nothing but a, a kind of a patient made of a synthetic material and it will have similar human anatomical structure so the nurses will have a similar tactile experience touch experience of a human patient they put the rice tube. The advantage of using a simulation in this learning is, yes, it is safe. And it is also very, the nurses can commit mistakes on a simulated environment rather than a real environment. We also teach them skills like urinary catheterization. So how to put a urinary catheter for a bedridden patient. So how to, uh, this is the first skill, tactile skills. So how to draw blood and things like that. The second set of skill sets is environment. So we create artificial environments of, are near real-time environments of an ICU intensive care unit, near real-time environment of a ward, of an emergency room, and we do a role play. So the students under training will do a role play within that environment to see how an ER will look like. And we create an exact environment of that. And there'll be an instructor who will be observing and debriefing uh, what they have done in that environment. The third is, of course, an animations that we use as part of this training, so which are digital simulations. And uh, just last week, we have also installed an AR-VR 
facility within uh, AR based artificial reality, virtual reality based learning within our sim lab. So we will give access to that also in some of the cities. So this is the second component, which is simulation learning. The third component is we have access to hospitals both in tier one, tier two, tier three cities. That means both the urban and rural India, we have network of our hospitals, both Apollo hospitals and also hospitals partnered with both uh, Apollo Med Skills and TCSI on. So these hospitals will also become the training grounds for the on-job training for these nurses. On-job training is important because they are in, it's a very immersive learning in a real environment. So they get access, they will have an observership to some of the skills. So it's a very guided immersive learning. I'm saying guided immersive learning because we give them access to something called skill logbook. So we have already identified some 28 skills that they need to learn as a part of their on-job training. So before they get uh, assessed and certified, they actually complete this on-job training. And after that, we have a uh, assessment that is done, uh, which is both on submission of, so the, the student gets certified based on multiple assignments. So one is as they learn during the knowledge sessions, there are assignments during the simulation and uh, on-job training, there are assignments which are guided through a logbook. And there's a final assessment, which is an online assessment MCQ and clinical case-based assessment. And the students will have to clear that exam before they get certified. Mm -hmm. So this is how the journey um, happened. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. yeah, and that's so uh, nice to hear. It's a fantastic journey when it comes to, you know, imagining how technology has enabled this at every step without sacrificing the best pedagogical principles, I would say, uh, because this is what we would have expected in a face-to-face -face session. And having visited the Apollo Med Skills Training Center in Hyderabad, I have seen it personally, The some of the things that you were mentioning, it was simply unbelievable that all these can be achieved through technology so uh, with this i'm sure uh, you know we are not going to miss out on most of the rigorous uh, kind of training that happens uh, you know through the latest technologies now coming to uh, taking it to many organizations many academic institutions uh, uh, so mr ranjan from tcs ion uh, how do you foresee this panning out and you know unfolding i would say uh, to many, many more organizations. Let's assume they are interested to partner uh, and, you know, offer these courses. How does it uh, go ahead? You know, like, how do we take it forward? So this is open to both of you, actually. You both can uh, respond to this. Sure. So uh, Madhuri, number one is that uh, the partnership that we see with uh, Apollo the fine program is just one program that we are beginning beginning with mm -hmm. because we feel that that is one program that can create a lot of impact there are two other programs which is there in hospital for hospitals operations executive as well as retail states pharmacy we are sure that over time we will expand the bouquet of uh, learning programs for different categories of people who work in the allied healthcare space as well as in hospitals mm -hmm. but as far as the fine program goes like uh, i had mentioned be uh, before it would be a combination of seminars both virtual and in person that we will have with nursing institutions etc Plus, apart from that, our ground sales team will also be reaching out to institutions in their territories. Mm -hmm. The other thing which I'd like to mention here, Madhuri, is that uh, it is not just the learning program. Mm -hmm. So there is learning program, there is assessment, which would be very robust, certification which is recognized by industry and most important of our, uh, all both apollo and us will jointly be working to ensure that every student who undergoes this program successfully gets placed or uh, gets a better placement through all, uh, our network and uh, I think I'll request Dr. Rao also to mention a little bit about how 
the industry, uh, the hiring managers uh, have reacted or what is their opinion about this program? So over to you, Dr. Rao. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Ranjan, for that uh, uh, insight. So just to add to what Ranjan mentioned, uh, we have done some workshops uh, involving the stakeholders. It was predominantly from the senior nursing leaders, both from the academy and uh, uh, hospitals to get their first reactions on this program. I think oh, everyone was overwhelmed hearing about this particular course. Um, everyone has actually highlighted uh, on the need for such program and also um, how the, 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 they said that most of the challenges that they are currently facing on the field in the hospitals and also as academicians in a nursing institute, because they are also seeing gaps in curricula, but the mm -hmm. curriculums are very, the curriculum is very rigid, regulated. So they will not be able to change the number of learning hours or add new topics. So that's an advantage to them. On the hospital side, you we are forming a bridge between the academic institution as well as the hospital. So they are also quite happy that the nurses trained on this would come and join them more knowledgeable and with higher uh, with uh, better skills and uh, more safer nurse joining their environment and reducing their onboarding time as well so uh, it's a win-win situation for everyone the nurse for the hospital for the academic institution and uh, all the stakeholders are partners in this the nursing institutes are partners the nurses themselves the trainee nurses are partners because we needed commitment of learning from them because it's not easy for them just to be in the final year and also dedicate some hours to this program. So that, that commitment is required. And of course, a strong technology platform, interactive platform from TCSI on, and we bring in our clinical experience. And the hospitals who partner with us, some of them, they want the their environments to be their OJT environment. So it becomes more realistic for a nurse before they hire them. So it's a very inclusive program. So every stakeholder is involved in it. Yeah, uh, that's actually, you know, bringing into reality whatever we talk in the skilling ecosystem about being industry uh, integrated in terms of the course design and also being demand driven. So it is uh, satisfying everything on various accounts because you already mentioned that industry has a very good acceptance of this program and also we are bringing the academia and of course the training partner and you being, uh, you know, an industry representative as well from the Apollo group and TCS ION bringing the technology expertise. So I'm sure this is going to really make a huge difference uh, in reaching out to people and impacting them positively in nursing education. So besides all that we discussed so far, is there anything else you wish to add uh, to our discussion before we close it? No, thanks uh, Madhuri. Thanks for uh, inviting us. And uh, this program is definitely a need of the art. And uh, we, I didn't speak much about the digital skills on this program, but um, um, it's robustly covered uh, uh, because if you see, there's a lot of aging population also growing up. The new areas that are emerging, home care, and particularly on the, in the area of geriatric aids. Yeah. And uh, we are facing, as a, as a clinical world, we are facing threefold challenges. One from the communicable diseases or pandemics that we have recently seen. Second is the non-communicable diseases, hypertension, diabetes, uh, stroke, multiple uh, NCDs. And third is the trauma and road traffic accident. So it's a kind of uh, uh, a three-pronged uh, challenge that we are seeing. And uh, we have included those elements and also included elements of technology because there's a lot of artificial intelligence, clinical decision support systems, remote monitoring, particularly in home care. All such elements are also covered as part of curriculum. So this is what I just wanted to highlight that I missed in my. Uh, thank you. Oh, thank yeah. you. Thank you, Madhuri. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your views, expertise, and insights about the program. We wish you the best uh, once again from Team Anderson uh, for this collaboration. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Mm -hmm.